Today I'm at North Bucks Machining I'm with Joanne and Stuart, directors from the company. Uh, over the last couple of years, um, there's been a lot of changes in the business for you know, circumstances outside of your control. Maybe Joanne, tell us about your journey over the last two years and where this company's going. So um, around two years ago, we were predominantly in the milk bottle mould industry, uh, repairs and refurbishments of milk bottle moulds. Um, but we had, well, I don't really know how to <laughs> describe what we went through, but um, we lost a couple of members of staff due to illness um, and we had to change our work completely overnight. So in the last year, we've gone from 90% milk bottle manufacture and repair to nothing and now 100% CNC machining, concentrating on Stu's skill set, which is high-end, low volume. Okay, well, well, let's touch on that. Stuart, when we say CNC machining, what, what markets are you aiming for now? Where, where are you going? We're predominantly aiming for uh, the motorsport industry, uh, high-end automotive, uh, and a lot of prototype manufacture. Um, we've found a niche in low volume, real high accuracy stuff, uh, we've got a quick, quick turnaround and we deliver good quality. Now, the pair of you are very youthful, and to be directors <laughs> of the company, that gives you a really good advantage. Um, how hungry are you to make this business a real success now going forward, Joanne? It's, it's our legacy. It's our family. Everything we do, our name goes on it. Our family name is based on our reputation as a business. So we are constantly striving for the next thing, the next job, the next adventure, the next... And the next investment, because in I, I also know that over the past few years you've invested quite a lot of money, haven't you, in machinery. Yes. Give, give us an, uh, an overview of, of how much you've spent on the technology here and what it is. Um, well, we invest in machinery every single year um, since we've started. Um, we are around the half a million, coming up to three quarters of a million in machine tools now. So. And, and some of those obviously very modern, uh, certainly the Quasar machines that you have out there. Stuart, tell us a little bit about the fact that you had uh, one machine and then you bought what you call its sister machine, didn't you? A five-axis right, yeah. Quasar machine. Why did you go for, for the same machine or two of the same? Uh, two of the same because we were very impressed with the results of the first Quasar. Um, and the nature of the work we were going into was um, mainly mainly um, handed components for, for symmetrical car parts. So we thought a system machine, we could do left and right hand on, on two machines simultaneously to get the, the delivery times down to win the contracts. And you talked about tight tolerances earlier when in the markets that you're looking to go into. These machines hold in those tight tolerances day in, day out for you? Yes, they do. Um, we can hold uh, reliably under 10 microns um, on a five axis component. Um, bore diameter, bearing bore diameters and things like that. Because I know with these machines that are supplied by ETG, they come with scales, don't they, as standard uh, growth control as well, which enable you to get to those results. Yes, and the, the condition of the machine shop itself uh, also helps the ambient temperature. Tell us about this inspection room, Joanne. This is rather wonderful. Some great graphics on the wall behind us and some yes. new technology in here as well. Is this important in your manufacturing process? Hugely important because... How can you produce something if you can't check that it's right? Mm -hmm. So we are held to um, tolerances on drawings and we have tailored all of our purchases in the inspection side to meet customer requirements. So our most recent purchase is a CMM, which can measure within 1.8 microns. So we're able to give formal reports now on every component as to whether or not it's correct to drawing. We looked, so we looked at two parts of this process, really. We looked at the manufacturing using the machines, and we've looked at the, the measurement. How about the creation of your components? I know you're a big advocate of uh, Open Minds Hypermill software. So you, you've had a lot of experience in using their products, haven't you? How has that helped you in the early part of the process? Well, Hypercad S, um, they've kind of condensed uh, their um, form so that it's, you can do more with less. The surfacing cycles are a lot more powerful. Um, you need to do less wireframing to get a, a better result in uh, actually creating a, a 3D form of a, of a component. So there are three kind of integral parts, really. Programming, creation of part, manufacturing and, in, and inspecting. And it, what about for the future? Um, we hear a lot of talk about automation. Is this somewhere where you're going to go and maybe start to embrace? What do you think, Joanne? 
No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, a word, well, a and why do you say no? <sighs> because what we love, and especially because machining is Stuart's passion as well as what we do, um, the weird and the wonderful, the tricky jobs, the one-offs, the prototyping, the small batch, that's what we are passionate for. And I don't want to move away from what we are passionate about. I like that. I really I like the, uh, the answer there. Um, on the, the, the geographics, you're based here very much in the central sort of motorsport belt, aren't you? Mm -hmm. That gives you an advantage in the market you'll maybe try to tap into as well, does it, Stuart? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, to be on the doorstep of some of the biggest players um, for ease of communication and um, correspondence with them, it, it's found we've, it's helped us a lot, yeah. Sounds like you're going to have a good, uh, good years ahead of you, especially because you've got a new building as well. Is he, is he going to be, you going to send him in there to do his machining in the future? I am, yes. <laughs> well, we're looking to invest in a bigger machine to go next door and he's going to have to have some kind of floating desk or office, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> so.